Hey, what's up guys? It's Nick or Mr. Odyssey here. This is actually a part two to my video series on the whole clonage of frames and Banggood and all this. And in this second episode, I'm actually taking some time to talk with Kebab FPV or Bob Regu Regu Regu. I can't say his last name. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoy. Um, it's a long video, so grab a cup of tea and enjoy. Start just running questions at you. I figured I'd uh, introduce you to everyone. Um, do you want to introduce it or uh, introduce sure? It? Yeah, go ahead. I'm better known as Bob Rugi. You can find me on, on YouTube at Cabob FPV, and I design all the Hyperlight line of frames and uh, some other various things that are on the market. And I pretty much work very closely with Sergio at Paraflip to bring things that we want to the market. And everybody else gets the benefit from that. Yeah, and that's why I figured I would. Uh, I reached out to you to talk to you since you're uh, uh, so up there with frame design, and you're uh, right next to Surge with Pyroflip. So uh, you might be able to give some insight in um, some. What's the word I'm looking for? Insight as to in, what the to clone market, frame market. Yeah, the, the clone market. Um, so recently, about two days ago, I posted a video on my channel talking about Banggood, you know, with their whole cloning, and uh, yeah. I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Tommy, oh my god, from Rotoriot, he had his... Yeah, straight up, straight up copied. Yep, <laughs> they're, yeah, like, yeah, they're not even, they're, they don't even care. Yeah, <laughs> straight exactly. Straight copies. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So, um, I was actually receiving a lot of bad, um bad comments on that video because people are saying well frame companies are overcharging for these frames and why would i buy a 120 dollar frame you know like the impulse rc alien when i can go out yeah. and buy a 30 dollar frame so i wanted to see what you had to say about you know why are these frames so expensive and you know why are yeah so there's there's actually there's a, there's a lot i have to say about about all this um the stuff that i i, I haven't said on my own YouTube channel or don't really make public because I would just get hammered for it. But I'm happy to discuss it. So first and foremost, my my popularity of my frame designs, I did I, I'm not in any illusion that most of my popularity is because of my association with Sergio and Piraflip. And if I didn't have that, I would not become popular. So while there are a lot of people out there making frames and a lot of them are really good frames, really good designs. They don't have the benefit of Paraflip and the connection with the community that I have in LA that is really what started it all and what started everything. And then aside from that, it's a little bit of good design and attention to detail that pretty much makes the frames what they are. And so the clone market is a real big pain, but I think that people are focusing on the wrong things because while the clone market, it's, it is definitely like detracting from innovation and it is it is hurting people i think that marketing is more important and while paraflip doesn't really do mark we're not marketing people we don't market we just do what we want and everybody else we figure is going to want what we want as well that kind of is our marketing so that brand the hyperlight brand is very strong because everybody knows that we do what we want and we just happen to make it available for everybody else as well and that that branding is very strong. So I have zero worry of clones or cloners or anything from China because the brand is extremely strong. And then after that, we don't price things insanely high. The profit margins on frames, to me, are pretty high because the product has no there, there's no service. It, it's a not, it's a it's a point sale. It's a one time sale. You don't have to really do anything about it. I mean, unless you're like Armitan and you're giving lifetime warranties, honestly, it's just a hassle to deal with. That makes sense why you want to charge $100, $120 for a frame because you have to deal with all these service requests. But a product that has no service and really has no failure rate and it doesn't cost that much to produce, well, I mean, the only thing you're actually selling is your unique design, which honestly is not that complicated to cut a frame. Yeah, there's a lot of details that go into it, and I, and I do put a lot of effort into my designs, and I would like to be compensated for it, even though I don't take any money for it. But at the end of the day, it's not unlike 
somebody else that sticks two force two sticks together and put some motors on it's, it's honestly frames are frames they work and they work yes yeah, so some of them are a little bit better here and there but they're not all that different so the fact that people are putting so much emphasis on oh my design is amazing and great and i'm going to charge 120 dollars for this design to me seems a little ridiculous now impulse rc of course has been doing it for a long time and i know the guy that does it I, I've, I've been following since the very since 2013, since the very very beginning. He has done incredible work from day one, and he is truly like a visionary, in the sense that he he's he he's very good at what he does, and he's like a hundred percent into it. So the stuff that he makes is fantastic. The price is still extravagant, but the stuff that he makes is fantastic. Mm-hmm. So I'll, I'll give him that. The 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 pro, the branding and the company and just the EOS of the of the whole impulse rc is is good it's correct it's all fantastic the price is just really really high mm-hmm. now what why do you think they're charging you know these outrageous prices you know um in my last video i talked about the impulse rc six inch alien that i bought from rotorite that's 129 dollars for the kit where in reality um you know i haven't made many frames but you're paying not even 25 bucks for the carbon to cut it and then they're charging yeah. you know that much why do you think they're charging such are they just doing it to scam out people or is it is there something else in there that i'm missing so here's what i can equate it to so i'm a dentist and let's equate this to dentistry so when you go to the dentist and you get a crown a crown is something that i hope most people understand <laughs> it's a little helmet for the tooth mm-hmm. i've got crowns one. Yeah, a crown is is not a cheap item. It's a considered a major, major, major item to get for a patient. And this is usually in the range of a thousand to two thousand dollars for this crown. Now, what is the actual cost to the dentist? The actual cost is the lab fee, which I'll plainly say is somewhere between fifty dollars for the lowest end crown to five hundred and fifty dollars for a very high end veneer. Somewhere in that range is what the dentist will pay the lab. Now the office you know, you have your, your staff, you have your assistants, you have all that other stuff. That costs you money as well. It's a couple, another couple hundred dollars. But at the end of the day, probably the crown is going to be at least 50% profit for the dentist. But now what do the dentists have to do to be able to do that? They have to go through school. They have to do all this other business. They're all, all this other stuff. So in essence, yes, the product itself is very low cost. And it, and it really is easy to make. But all the other stuff that goes into it where you have to manage the the sales, you have to manage the business, you have to do some minor marketing at least, and you got to do all this other stuff, it adds. It adds up. And so still I would say that the product is a very cheap product. And the reason why I kind of undervalue it is that you don't really have to go to school for four years to make frames. Like you just kind of draw a design, you give it to a manufacturer, and they cut it for you, and it comes out. So the reason why they want to charge a lot for it is because the person that designed it probably spent a lot of time designing it, thinks it's a really special design, has done some serious branding, some serious marketing, has run, has started a business around it, needs to make a profit from it, and so they charge a lot for it. It's, it's understandable, but at the end of the day, it doesn't it's not it's not that expensive. And anybody that's cutting that's uh, designing their own frames and their own I've helped hundreds of people design their own frames and give them tips and things that I've learned over all the designs that I've done. And they go off and, and I give them the manufacturers that I use too. And then they go off and get them cut themselves. And for the same money that you spend $130 for an alien, you get 15 frames and they love it because they're like, this is my creation. I got 15 of them. They're cheap and I can break them all day. And it's my creation. And that's the essence of our sport. That's the essence of our hobby. All we're doing by, by selling frames is, making it easier for other people to do it so but where do you stand on the whole clone do you know do you support the clones because they're essentially taking away no No. yeah i don't support them i don't support them but i also think that there's a reason for them specifically if you're selling a frame like the alien for 130 dollars, and it's like there's no intellectual property in this stuff there's no way to protect your your property so It's like the only reason for you to invest your time and effort and research into making it is for your own sake. It's, it's, it's a hobby. That's why it's a hobby industry. It's for the fun of it, the enjoyment of it. And so the clones, the reason why they exist is because the product is just so overpriced and it's so easy to copy. So from the very beginning, it's like, 
which one came first, the chicken or the egg? The marketing came first or the design came first? Like you have to do the marketing to be able to sell the design, but somebody else can come on, come, come through and like rip you off. And it's, it's, it's hard to say. I don't support them, but I know why they exist. They exist because products are just extremely overpriced. And I think that if Alien dropped their price to $75 or $70, which is still a high price, they would sell five times as many frames and they would make much more profit and they would have much stronger marketing because now everybody's flying an alien. Yeah, and I think that's what uh, Chad Nowak was trying to accomplish with the reverb. If you've seen that, it's the uh, it's really similar to the Alien, but they've uh, he's tried to drop the price as much as he could. Yeah, so the re- the, the design is great, and the, uh, Chad, what Chad is doing is it's fantastic that he's trying to do that. But I mean, I think it comes with nylon standoffs, and I think that he's saying that they dropped a standoff to save cost. Mm-hmm. I mean. These these components they don't cost much. Even if you get the highest grade, it's not like you're gonna drop five dollars off the price of the frame by having one less standoff. Yeah, I gotcha, I gotcha. <laughs> it's like it's it's comical that that was even a a thought. But um, yeah, it's it's great. I mean, it's good that they have a like a close knit like a network there, like Steel and Chad and, and Impulse RC. It's it's they're they're fantastic. Yeah, they're doing um, good work. Yeah, and I mean, it's not just frames that we're, I mean, seeing getting quote-unquote quote, cloned. You know, there's motors, the, you know, Isheen with their VTXs <laughs> and stuff like that. Um, now, some people, you know, they're saying, oh, you know, it's not the same product. You know, it's changed, but, you know, you'll see, you know, the TBS Unify. It's a great VTX, and you'll see that for 40 bucks, where you can go on Banggood and buy a $15 um <clears throat> $15 VTX, it performs yeah. the same, but just the quality is not there. And I, that's what I think a lot of people miss when they're like, oh, I can shop at Banggood and get the same thing for the less of price. You're just not getting the quality yeah. you get. So Banggood is a, is a, it's, it's a huge problem, but it can't go away. So I work with Banggood. You know, it's obvious. If you look at my YouTube channel, half my stuff is from Banggood. Yeah. I don't, I don't, the, the problem is that there's no other nowhere else. Like there's nowhere else to go. And if you know what you're doing, you can use Banggood correctly. Now, what Banggood does is they're a massive company in China at this point. They're like Amazon status in China. They have they actually stock all of the products. Like they have what like 200,000 SKUs. They stock all of those products in warehouses. And and if you order multiple items, you'll see that you get them in multiple different packages. So I don't know, our import system in the United States is unlike any other country in the world where Europe is paying ridiculous import fees. We don't pay anything. And somehow they can send like a screw in a package across the sea for free (laughs) and they can sell it for 50 cents. Um, So Benga, what they do is that they take products that are popular and then they try to increase their profit margin on them. Now, China is an entirely opportunistic country. All they know is opportunity and they don't care about quality or anything they just want to maximize the immediate gains so a product that sells well like i recently i I popularized the aok fly motors Mm -hmm. they started making copies of the aok fly motors and selling that and then i went back to them and i'm like this is insane this is terrible and like i was stuck because i had now i had found a motor that i thought was fantastic and i did not think that they would do this but then i started getting emails from people dozens of emails from people saying look i have these motors are terrible why did you say they're good and I, and I had to tell them they're fakes, and now they went back and told Banggood, and Banggood sent them new motors. But the point is that they, it was actually detracting from my reputation that they started doing this, and there's there's nothing anybody can do about that, and that is the evil of Banggood. Mm-hmm. Now, the other products from other companies that make, like, VTXs and various things, the product that you're getting from a, a company like um, like TBS TBS is run by Trappy, which is in China and has a team of people in China to do quality control in China. And the whole point here is that they're in China. Mm-hmm. And when you're when you buy a product from a company that's designed by somebody that's Western or a Western, honestly, a Western company that is in China doing product control, quality control and, do, and doing all the design and production, everything there, you're getting the best possible product. You're getting a cheap, a cheap product that's made in China, but they have good components, good manufacturing, good quality control. Now, when you go to Banggood and buy a random product, a random VTX from Eoshin or something, yes, it will work, 
but you don't have the same quality control. Yashin uses 100% recycled parts. Nothing on that VTX you get is an original component. You just really? have no idea when it's going to fail. You, really? you have no clue. There's no quality of service. There's nothing. So yes, you get it at a cheaper price. And if you're a racer racing and you don't really care, I mean, you're just going for like budget because you're smashing up all your gear all day long. Sure, why not? You can go for that, that lower end product. But honestly, how much money are you saving? Paying a VTX that is maybe like $10, not even $10 cheaper, $5 cheaper for and then it might burn out or you might smash it it's a it's a toss up if you're going to if you smash all your gear constantly sure go buy the cheap stuff but if you're doing like long range or something or flying in any kind of a public ground where you do not want to lose your quad or <laughs> you just you don't want to have that risk it's just stupid to go with a lower end product when the good TBS product is 5 10 dollars more i mean let's see the Unify is the is the best VTX on the market because it has the fantastic quality control and everything else behind it. The whole smart audio issue was, I mean, whatever. It was it was pointless. People, it doesn't make it doesn't matter to me because I'm not going to go with that China product because it's just not the same quality because it doesn't have somebody that's in the community from the Western world knows what we want is giving us what we want there doing quality control sitting on top of it daily making sure everything goes smoothly. Now, you know, you see, you know, products like Tommy's Frame, for example, where the product isn't even released on the market and it's already getting cloned, where, for example, like the Unifies or, um, you know, the Crossfire have been on the market for a year, years mm -hmm. or now, and we haven't seen really any clones of a Crossfire or anything like that. So what do you think about that? Well, the Frames, it was, it was just a, it was a, easy target i mean it's it was like a no-brainer for them to copy the, the tommy's frame it's a frame that he popularized he's a he's a big name he already did the marketing and then he didn't release the frame and even when he when the frame did come out it's a hundred dollars yeah and it's very easy to reproduce that it has two custom components two pieces of aluminum that are so easy to mill and it's just like it's an obvious like they they did it in such an obvious way that it would have been stupid for a cloner not to take advantage of it. Like I can just run off their marketing that they already did and just <laughs> sell my own frame. For the, yep. That's the same thing. Yep. Like they just painted a big target on the, the, themselves. They did all the marketing. It was already expensive. It's very easy. If the clone isn't even cheap, it's seventy dollars, and it's like comical that the, the cloners are just like, hey, we don't even need to cut our margins down to nothing. We can just you know, sell it for a little bit cheaper, make it reasonable, and people are going to buy it. Yep, yep. To totally makes sense. Um, you know, and like I said in my video, you know, it, it really sucks to see, you know, Tommy, um, you know, I met him. I don't know if you've met him, but, you know, he's a really yeah, hardworking yeah. guy. You know, he puts a lot of his effort into yeah. developing the hobby, hobby and trying to make new things, and then you just see him get, you know, cloned and ripped off like this, and it kind of hurts, you know, um, to see someone so nice just, yeah, it hurts, but I mean, okay, if, so if I don't have the same public status as him, but if I was going to gonna do that, I would have, you know, made a video, marketed it one day, and then had it available within a week, and I would not have priced it $100. Mm -hmm. Yes, that frame is a little bit more pricey to, to produce, but they can easily sell it for $70, easily sell it for $70, and I would actually sell it for you know, like sixty dollars. You know, fifty nine ninety nine. Mm -hmm. That frame would sell so fast with his public figure, and it doesn't even matter if it's good or bad. That doesn't make any difference. It's mm -hmm. the fact that he uses it. He gets great results with it, and everybody wants his results. Mm -hmm. So that alone, with a reasonable price, would sell five times as many frames, and the resulting profit from that would be five times more for a mm -hmm. product that has no service. You, yep. It's a one-time sale. So it's just, it's mind-blowing to me that these companies or even individuals come out with frames and they're like, yeah, we're going to charge $130 for this. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make any sense for something that has no, there's no way to, no way to protect it. Now the Unify, it's a good product because of the quality control and the components that go into it. Mm -hmm. That's not something that's easily copied. And if another company copied it, it, they would struggle to sell it for the same price as TBS. Mm -hmm.
Yeah. So that's their protection. That's in essence their protection. But in this industry, getting like patents and such, it's like it's ridiculous. I was just talking to Gemfan yesterday. They're in lawsuit with uh, King Kong and another company that just straight up copies everybody. And it doesn't matter because King Kong is already selling the prop and has been selling it for years and has already made tons of money from it. And they don't care if they get sued. And what's the result of the lawsuit? Okay, we'll stop making it. Whatever. We already made our money. <laughs> like it's this whole game is it's it's a game that you can't win. And it happened and it's in China, too. Like my manufacturer that um, that makes my my frames mm -hmm. got copied by another person that was selling it on, on Alibaba. And he went to that company he went to the factory and like got in a feud with the guy that's copying it and was like what are you doing like you're, you're taking away my my livelihood because now my the carbon manufacturer my carbon manufacturer is like 90 percent only doing pure flip frames like mm -hmm. we give him so much work and so much business that he's kind of like a major we're the biggest customer he has mm -hmm. and so he's literally this this cloner is taking away his livelihood so he's going after him, and we don't have to do anything because it's like, okay, well, it is what it is. We're not going to stop ordering frames. <laughs> yeah. Now, have have you has your frame been cloned at all? You know, I I, I don't spend much time browsing around on Banggood, but you know, I see the posts in the Facebook group. Oh, look, here's so and so's frame. But have you been? Yeah. yeah. So my problem is different. It's not cloners from China, although now the China cloners have caught on because. I'm like I'm like under the radar like completely because people people don't I don't have as big of a following as other people but because of the marketing and the business and the way that I do it I do things I am I'm tooting my own horn here but I'm pretty sure I've sold more frames than any other individual frame maker in the industry like yeah, I by, definitely by double with that. yeah yeah, yeah. I, I've, seen, <laughs> like, I've seen a lot of hyper late frames out there so uh I'm, yeah I'm the, the floss the floss frames alone have sold i think well well over four thousand yeah. and from my other frames i mean i've sold well over five thousand frames yeah and so my problem is that i show everybody what i do i'm i'm completely open i talk about all the things that i'm testing and i get a bunch of flame for it a bunch of the people like angry at me for it but i tell them everything I, I give them my reasons i say how i tested it why i tested it yeah nothing scientific but it all it's all logical and it's all there for you everybody can do their own tests and so what people end up doing is that they watch my videos they see what i've done and then they pretty much do the same thing and then they sell it off as their own innovation mm -hmm. and while I don't care about 90% of them. There are a couple of people that are big figures that if you're a big, big figure and you are trying to sell off innovation as your own when it's plainly obviously been there out in the open and thousands of people have already seen it, that's not right. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I it's think... It's okay to copy. It's okay to copy and do things. Like, uh, what's it called? Diatone just copied my the floss frame, and I'm totally fine with it. But they are putting on the package, this is designed by Bob Brugge from Hyperlight and Pyrodrone. Like, they're, it's going to be big letters on the package. Really? And I, I, wow. Yeah, and I asked for it, but they had already discussed that inside the company. Diatone is actually one of the respectable, like, China companies. They're a low-ish end company, but they do make decent products, and they're actually they're actually respectable. Yeah, they respect the pilots and the designers. Um and like you were saying earlier, it really comes down to the status quo of pilots because you'll, you know, Kevin, Tommy, you know, uh, Steel because he flies the Impulse RC, you know, their frames are almost instantly copied. And now they're finally catching on to you where you, you're no offense, but a low level, lower level status on YouTube uh, with mm -hmm. your frame. And they're finally catching on because they notice people are buying it. So. Yeah, and that's what China has noticed too. They have just realized that, oh wait, there's a lot of people flying this particular design. We should just copy it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like they don't they don't notice it. Yeah. And I'm waiting for the day that Banggood copies my design mm -hmm. so I can tell them, Okay, look, you're gonna not do this anymore or else I'm gonna seriously blast you hardcore. Like so far I haven't blasted Banggood for the the stupid things they do because they're just like they're such a big company that it doesn't it's not gonna matter. I can't by me saying bad things about Banggood, I'm actually helping them, so it's pointless. Yeah, pointless for me to even bother. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. 
Well, I mean, I think that's I think that's really the basis of this conversation. I mean, do you have anything else you think should be touched on with this whole cloning situation or uh, anything like that? Mm, I not I don't I don't know. It's it's a problem, but it's not a problem at the same time. Some yeah. things are a big issue. Some things aren't. Things like um, the uh, clover antenna that uh, Alex Grieve puts so much time, money, and effort into Mm -hmm. that just gets copied left and right like nothing that is annoying although you know it's easy to say it's just a little bend of wire how how could you put your name on it and call it yours that bend of wire took a lot of time and effort to to develop and um it's it's just unfortunate that it's something that you can't easily protect and now with the pagoda antennas and various other things like those items that Somebody needs to put the effort into to make better, but it, once you've made it better, it's just the tuning issue, and it's very easy to copy. Those are the big issues. Mm-hmm. Things like frames, it doesn't matter. Things like uh, like electronic components, it doesn't matter because it's 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 an electronic component. It's cheap to make anyways. It's the design work that goes into it that's trouble. And honestly, the people that are pushing the industry forward the fastest and the hardest are the people that are doing it for the enjoyment of it, the people that are doing it for themselves. They don't care about profit. They don't care about anything else. And look at Betaflight. Like that, they don't make money. That's and Betaflight runs the industry. If they charged 50 cents per quad out there, people would pay it because it's worth it, yeah. and they would have a very significant income. But because of the people involved with the project and everything, they can't do it. But I, I still think that they should. I mean, it's it would be great. It would be great for them. It would give them livelihood to actually do this. Mm-hmm. And it wouldn't it wouldn't necessarily be for to pay any individual person. It would just be to like pay for things that they need for testing or various equipment or componentry for them. Mm-hmm. And it's just like it's that's just the industry we're in. The industry is an enjoyment industry, and there's not a lot of people making a lot of money from it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I think a lot of people are putting their hard work and effort into it just for. Uh, you know, I don't want to say a minimum outcome, but uh, either you, yeah. get, you get cloned or you're just helping somebody out in the hobby. And, and like you said, there's not many people like the Betaflight guys, for example, who are making money off of this. They're just doing it for the pure um, advancement yeah. of everything. Yeah. And, you know, back to the cloning, I feel like the guys aren't there. The guys aren't there to on Banggood or any of these cloning. They're not there to help grow the hobby. They're just there to make an extra buck. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's why when I, I, when I recommend stuff, it's, it's very difficult to tell a newcomer, you know, go out and buy this product because it's good. They're going to go buy the cheap product because they don't want to spend a lot of money in it. But as they kind of get into it and as they do it more and more, then they start to realize that, okay, well, the cheap stuff doesn't really working out for me. And like, uh, I think I heard on another podcast. Oh no, from I heard from Steele on the TBS show. Now I think it's the TBS show, yeah, yeah. where uh, Willard, Willard, when he first met Willard, he was flying like the cheapest, junkiest, most garbage stuff imaginable (laughs) and like he could not fly and it never worked and everybody was pretty much afraid every time he flew because they didn't know if something was going to fail and it's going to crash into something and like uh seal was like okay look just get this stuff and it will work better and then like a week later he had like all the new stuff and it was like real equipment and his skill was like 10 times ahead of where he was and it's like that's kind of where it is. It's like when you buy the super cheap garbage, you can make it work, but it takes knowledge and experience to know how to make it work. Mm-hmm. And then if you just buy the good stuff that somebody recommends, then that's going to probably be a better bet for you. You're going to have a better experience. And that's something that I think Fat Truck is running into with their 101 kit, mm-hmm. which I, I talked to a couple of people that are kind of like testing it for them and doing final things on it. I think they need to like finish it and tune it and make it like properly work for mm-hmm. the consumer because yeah. if it doesn't work out of, out of the box, that's a terrible experience. And then you have um, Steel and a couple other guys that are putting together a website that is pretty much geared towards a formula that works for them that they have been using so that some, if somebody wants to get into it, they can just follow that formula and it works. And that's something that I've been talking to Sergio about for a year now where – 
I keep telling him, listen, just give me my own website and I will only populate it with products that I use that I know works and that I can tell people, just go to this website. Anything you buy from it will work. Just mm -hmm. pair anything with anything and it will work. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the easiest way to go forward. And I think that's what Joshua Bardwell is trying to do, although he's taking another st another stance. He's trying to like educate everybody on everything when not everybody wants to learn about everything. They just want to know what works mm -hmm. and they want to have it. They want to have somebody tell them what's the cheapest, best, highest value direction forward that will work the best for me. And that's the, the tailored setup is what people are going to move towards because people don't want to learn how to do everything. Guys like me that have been in it for a long time, we know kind of how to make things work and we can make anything work, but mm -hmm. we still fall back to what we have we have found with our formula that works properly with this motor, this kind of frame, this kind of battery, this kind of setup mm -hmm. that works Buy those and it will work. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's where I think it needs to go. Like um, Sergio is making a bunch of new motors and these companies are making all these new motors. And like now I'm talking to these companies that now are designing motors and they, they ask me, you know, what kind of motors? And I tell them, look, you need three motors. You need the freestyle five inch, you need the race five inch, and you need the six inch motor. There's no other motors that you need. Stop making motors in yeah. ten different KVs. Nobody needs to needs to know about anything. Don't even put the KV on the motor. It doesn't yeah. matter. Just say this is the five inch freestyle motor, this is the five inch race motor, and this is the six inch motor. That's it. Nobody needs to know anymore. Yeah. Nobody's doing ridiculous ten S five inch runs. <laughs> Those yeah. people are gonna gonna buy specific components. They know what they're doing. You don't need to tell people how to do that. You just need three motors to cover the entire general industry, mm -hmm. yeah. and that's the trouble. The people don't know what motor to get, what KV to get, what this to get, what that to get. It's just a big question mark. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. It just there's the there's there's only a few you know innovators and you know teachers in the hobby and I'll, I'll name them off for you number one being you i, I i've watched almost all of your videos thank and, you thank and you they're, they're they're very amazing i've learned a lot of stuff for it uh, from where i began almost you know two years ago flying like uh like a bird on a bird a, <laughs> a drunk bird uh, and now i i am pretty confident with my flying uh, and my flying style, and I uh, give part of that to you. But then there's people out there like uh, UAV Futures, Joshua Bardwell. Um, I mean, just to name a few. But there's plenty of guys out there, or they're not. Yeah, very all very guys. helpful. Yeah. So. Yeah. Anyways, um, well, thanks for coming on today. I really appreciate sure. you uh, talking with me. Um, it, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely agree with everything you're saying, and there. There, there's not much we can do about the cloning situation again. So, yeah. Yeah, and that's why I, I, I just I give up because I, I know that I'm under the radar and I have the support of the business and the marketing, or which the lack there of marketing, but just the well knownness of my back end. I don't have to worry about anything. Like I can put out anything, and even if somebody copies it before I come out with it, it doesn't really matter because everybody wants the Hyperlite version, the official one, because they know it's not going to be overpriced and they know that it's the original. Why bother going to a clone to save $2? Yeah. So, anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Feel free to check out uh, uh, Bob or Kebab FPV. Is, am I saying that right? Yeah. Um, K-A-B-A-B -A -B FPV yep. on YouTube. And uh, give him a subscribe and uh, check out his frames. That's at uh, pyrofliprc.com, correct? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pyroflip. Yeah. Uh, Paraflip. Yeah, this, he needs another website. <laughs> like, yeah. We need we need to just clean things up. Yeah. Anyways, I'm gonna chat with him a little bit more, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And I will... Lost out.